Hi, this is Dan Malloy from NYC Math Test, continuing with Advanced GMAT Quant. Let A be the sum of x consecutive integers, and let B be the sum of y consecutive positive integers. For which of the following values of x and y is it not possible that A equals B? So we have two separate sums of consecutive positive integers. So in the first case we have x integers, x consecutive integers, and the sum is represented by a. And in the second case, we have y consecutive positive integers, and the sum is represented by b. And they want to know for which values of x and y, which is how many consecutive integers, quantity of, of integers, is it not possible that the sums of those sets are the same? So my suggestion here is instead of dealing with the specific sums, because we could come up with examples and actually try to match up the sums, or we could come up with a general answer where we deal with whether or not the sum is even or odd. And I know that sounds like sort of a strange suggestion, but suppose we have a case where we have a certain number of integers, x or y, such that the sum must be even. And then we have some other number of integers um, for the other one, whether it's x or y, where it must be odd. So then they couldn't possibly be equal. And that's exactly what we want to know, is when it's not possible that the sums of the two sets would be the same. So let's play with that for a minute. Suppose you had a situation where you were trying to figure out for a particular number of integers, in this case that's um, say x or y, you wanted to know what um, whether that sum would have to be even or odd. So suppose you said right off the bat I have an even number of integers. Is the sum going to be even or odd? Well let's suppose you had, uh, let's just do a couple examples off on the side, an even number of integers, so two integers, maybe they're one and two. Well, the sum of 1 and 2 would be 3, which is odd. But then you could have more integers. Suppose you had four integers, like 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the evens would, their sum would be even, and the sum of two odd numbers is also even. So if you have an even number of integers, it's not clear whether the sum will be odd or even. It could be either way. It could be either odd or even. Can't say for sure. If you have an odd number of integers, now let's do an example of that. It could be like 1, 2, 3, which would be even, right? There's sum because you have two odds, so the sum is even. Or you could have um, 2, 3, 4, and now the sum would be odd. So if you have an odd number of integers, the sum could either be odd or even. We can't seem to um, say definitively that for an even number of integers it has to be a particular way, or for an odd number of integers it has to be a particular way. So that doesn't seem to be too helpful. But what if we take this a little bit more granular and specify the exact number of integers, x or y? Because we have these answer choices where they're going to say x has two integers, y has six in integers. So let's do this for all the numbers in the answer choice. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll do examples for each of these. As many examples as we need to do to just not not to go overboard here, but just enough to convince ourselves of the certainty for each of these. So for two integers, say one and two, the result is odd. For any two integers, the result is going to definitely be odd, right? If you have two and three, it's still going to be odd, four and five and so on. So we can say for sure a set of two consecutive integers has an odd sum, definitely. For three, we already talked about this. It could go either way, because it could have it could contain two odds, which would make it even, or it could contain one odd, which would make it odd. So we can't say for sure. For four, we've also done that already. One, two, three, four turned out to be even because it contained two odds. If you shift this and make it say two, three, four, five, it still contains exactly two odds. So its sum will always be even. That's helpful to know. How about five? 
5 is kind of like 4 plus you add 1 on. So 4 is always even, and then you add 1 on to the end. And in any case where you do that, you'll be adding, well, actually, let's think about this. Let's take our 2, 3, 4, 5 for a minute. 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5 is even. If I tack on a 6, that'll keep it even. But if I tack on a 1, that'll make it odd. So it seems like it can go either way. How about 6? Well, if you have, we already know 4 definitely has to be even. So let's start with that again. Let's do our 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5 we know has to be even. And to get to 6, we've got to tack on 2 more. So call it 6, 7. That sum is definitely odd. So that would turn this thing into an odd. So any set of six consecutive integers is bound to contain three odd ones. And the sum of three odd integers is odd. So six is always odd. And seven, I won't drag you through the analysis again, but if you're seeing the trend, three and five and seven all the odd sets can go either way because they can contain either an odd or an even number of odd integers. It's all about dealing with the odd integers. But let's look at the ones that have to be something. 2 has to be odd. 4 has to be even. 6 has to be odd. We're looking for a situation where it's not possible for, a to, for their sums to be equal. So we're looking for a situation where x and y have values that make it so that one of the sets has to be odd and one of the sets has to be even, which means there's no way a could equal b. So let's look around. If one of the sets has two integers and the other has six, they'll both be odd, so they could be equal. So we'll throw that away. If one of the sets has three and the other has six, basically any of the ones that have odd numbers of integers, we have to throw away because they're ambiguous. They could go either way. So we got to throw this away, we got to throw this away because it has a 7, and we got to throw this away because it has a 5. The only one left is C. Look at C. If you have one of the sets has 6 integers, it has to be odd, and the other set has 4 integers, it has to be even. So if one's odd and one's even, there's no way they could be equal. That's the exact situation we're looking for. So C is the best choice. There's probably other ways to go after this where you deal with the specific um, numbers of integers and try to make them equal, but I think you'll spend a lot more time playing with the trial and error, and even though this was somewhat time consuming, I think that would be even more time consuming. So whenever you have consecutive integers and you're dealing with their sums or their products, look for patterns as to what forces them to be odd and even. And uh, especially in cases where the question's phrased this way, where it's like something must be true or something must not be true, then you only need to um, draw conclusions from general patterns rather than deal with specific quantities.